Hey there, what is up, Black Community? Green Thumb here. So, first things first, I'm going to get back into the care videos. And the first plant we're going to be talking about is the rattlesnake calathea and calatheas in general. So, the rattlesnake calathea, I find to be the easiest calathea to actually care for. It's one of my longer lasting calatheas, one of the ones I've had that has managed to survive through the winter, and through the summer. So, with that being said, what do we gotta know about Calathea? So, Calatheas generally like a lot of humidity, about 60% humidity or more. You don't want to fertilize during the winter time, um, but you definitely want to make sure to keep the soil moist. Probably not as moist. Actually, I don't even keep mine as moist. I do let mine completely dry out before I water it again. That might be different for you depending on your environment. If you live in some place like Arizona where it's constantly hot. But, um, yeah, the uh, rattlesnake calathea seems to be the easiest calathea that I've cared for. Um, whenever you take them outside, you know... Make sure that you don't have them in direct sun. Um, dappled light could be okay, but you might get a little instances where they're burning like that. And that just means that you need more shade. So keep them in full shade if you can. They don't like direct sunlight at all during the summer. Make sure you do keep the soil moist. They like moist soil. Because um, again, they grow in the tropics, so they're used to it constantly raining. So, another thing to note about the Calathea is you can fertilize a little bit with them. I fertilize uh, a little bit with slow release. Um, I kind of treat them like a fern, you know, just adding a little bit of slow release fertilizer. Of course, when I had liquid fertilizer, I used to hit them every two weeks with it. So, every other week with a slow release. Um, common pests to look out for. Would be, without a doubt, scale, millibugs, and uh, thrips. Um, I've never really had a problem with pests on that, on really this Calathea, but I have had problems in the past with other Calatheas. And um, you can use pesticides, just make sure the pesticide it won't harm your plant too much. And then another thing you'll get to is... In your region, like right now, the humidity is quite low, so I've been getting crisp edges. Now, crisp edges, doesn't matter what the Calathea is, you're going to be getting your crisp edges. It just doesn't matter. That's just Calatheas for you, because they like it humid. Um, and I, had a, I do have a humidifier, and you know, it got pretty humid in here if I kept it up and... You know, you still tend to get crisp edges, but, um, yeah, and make sure you use a soil that kind of holds on the moisture if you're going to be putting it outside. Um, now I have this in a nice little terracotta pot. You don't have to use terracotta. In fact, terracotta drains the soil, uh, quicker away from the, uh, it wicks out the moisture quicker, if you will. That's what I'm trying to say. It'll wick out the moisture quickly. So you gotta be water it, watering it uh, a bit more. So yeah, that's something to be cautious of. If you could, try to use plastic pots or recycle your pots. Healthy for the environment. Better for the environment. Um, yeah, and, uh, it's really about it that I know of about the, uh, Calathea. Calatheas just, if you get a hold of them, they seem to be easy to care. Some are more difficult than others. I've had my fair share of difficult Calatheas. If you live in an area or say you have a room where you keep all your plants and say you only get like morning, maybe a little bit of afternoon sun, then you definitely want to do what I do. I think that's been the main cause of a lot of my Calathea losses is you want to keep them kind of closer to the window. That really seems to help or supplement with grow lights to at least get them through the winter and then move them outside. But if you live in an apartment like I do 
which I'm lucky enough to have a yard and everything with my apartments, but say you live in a apartment where maybe you only have a balcony or you only have windows, you definitely want to make sure this guy is getting the light that it needs. Um, but yeah, you want to keep them moist because another thing too is you'll wind up getting where the leaves roll up like that, but that's just a new leaf coming out, so I ain't too worried about it. But, um, so yeah, you definitely want to make sure to keep this guy moist. Because if you let him completely dry out, it's going to do more damage to him than uh, what it's really worth. But, uh, yeah, another thing, too, to note is if it's in lesser light, they won't get much of a purple back, kind of like this guy here. But the more light you give them, the more of the purple back that they have. And the purple back is basically there to help them uh, absorb as much light as they can. That really seems to uh, help them out. It's an adaptation that they've developed personally themselves because they live on the forest ground. So that's definitely something to important to uh, keep note of. So if you have it in lesser light and you put it out in shade, it's more likely going to fry anyways because it's in a much lesser light. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. You give it more light, it's going to develop that purple back uh, that it needs to absorb the light and not burn, even in shade. And that definitely uh, definitely can help it out. So definitely make sure you put it in a window. Now, I'm not saying give it direct sun through the window. No, that will scorch it. Just uh, make sure you keep it close by a window is basically what I'm saying. Um... Yeah, I mean, once you get a hold of that, um, if you aren't able to supplement, say, humidity, because I know for me, um, it's kind of expensive to supplement humidity right now, especially with inflation, you could come by with a fine mister and just mist them about maybe two to three times a day. That should suffice until you get them back outside or until you have the budget to, say get the humidity back up, but, um, yeah, uh, this rattlesnake calathea definitely seems like one of the easier calatheas. Um, another thing I forgot to do, forgot to tell you, not do, is, um, you can do what I do, is I take a water bottle and, uh, kind of have holes in it, and I'll just sprinkle the water on it. That also helps get the dust off, too, and things. That's another thing you want to make sure you do, is make sure you get the dust off your leaves, because that will definitely help them uh, photosynthesize. And that's something that's quite important for all plants, every house plant. If you have them inside, and you never take them outside, you want to try to simulate the rain as much as you can, in my opinion. Or if not, you're just going to be going through wiping all the leaves off constantly, because you want to make sure you get that dust off because that dust basically kind of shades the leaves out and prevents them from photosynthesizing, which can be bad and harmful to your plant. Um, so, yeah, another thing to keep in mind there, always dust your leaves. Um, and whenever you do do that, you're also getting rid of any potential pests that could be lingering with on your plant like spider mites or mealybugs, for example. So, other things to take note of there. So, now, another thing I'm going to mention, too, which I don't have, is variegation. Variegated calatheas. Now, this here is natural variegation on the calathea. In fact, I don't know why it has that type of variegation. Maybe it's a form of camouflage on the forest ground. But, um, so natural variegation is just basically, you could look it up and this is how the plant would look like in the wild compared to something with white variegation all over it. So another thing too is whenever you have a calathea with white variegation of some sort, you got to keep in mind that depending on the calathea, like my friend had a prayer plant that had white but it slowly lost its uh, variegation over time. So she had to completely cut it back to basically stems and let it grow again. And I'm not a fan of that type of variegation where you got to cut the plant back constantly just to keep the variegation. That's just ignorant in my opinion. If I want variegation, I want the variegation to stay. Um, anyways, enough about that rant. So... 
whenever you have a calathea with white variegation or speckled variegation or yellow variegation, whatever the variants of calatheas there may be out there, I haven't really done a lot of uh, looking into new calatheas lately because when I was trying to start a calathea collection, a lot of them died. But um, So anyways, whenever you have variegated calatheas, you want to make sure they're actually closer to the window. So say if this guy was variegated, I'd have him where my lucky bamboo is. Uh, just for the simple fact that you're not having a lot of chlorophyll within those leaves basically doing what it needs to do at that point in time. Chlorophyll is important for your plant to get through, especially during the winter when we have less light. During the winter, if you have a variegated calathea, you definitely want to make sure that you have it up against a window. But you want to make sure that that window doesn't get too cold either, because they don't like it really cold. I've had mine take temps down to 60 degrees, and that's about the coldest I allow it. I might attempt it today with some chilly temps. But I only do that because I know things are going to be warming back up. Now, if your windows have a cold breeze or anything like that, it could harm your calathea. It could hurt your calathea. So make sure you keep it by any, keep it away from any drafty windows or any doors that may get a draft whenever they open up or if there's just a natural draft because your door is kind of wonky or whatever. So... Yeah, anyways, with the more variegation, you want to definitely have it closer to the window because, again, it's not going to have all that uh, chlorophyll to have... Uh, sorry. It's not going to have all that chlorophyll to help it naturally photosynthesize, so it's going to be much harder for the plant to photosynthesize than, say, what something like the rattlesnake calathea would. Um, another thing to keep in mind, too, if you bring it outside, you definitely want to keep it in shade because it's going to fry compared to, say, maybe what a tree will. Because, again, these plants naturally grow under stories. But in the long run, it will probably help your variegation because you're allowing it to get beefed up for the winter and allowing it to go through um, the summertime to get beefed up and to get going and all that stuff. So that's another thing to uh, keep in mind, too. If you take your plants outside, it will help their variegation. Not only will it help their variegation, but it will greatly and dramatically help them survive winter better, um, especially when you're doing what I'm doing and I've got grow lights with the blue and red spectrum that I can use to try to get them through. And that's really basically all I've got. Otherwise than that, I would have just what you see right here. Just very few plants. But, uh... So, yeah. Again, guys, sorry for the shaky camera. I only have a tablet and, uh... My hands... Well, not hands, but arms are kind of getting tired. But, um... Yeah, so this is just general Calathea care guide. You can really apply this to most Calatheas, really to the general amount of prayer plant family and calatheas. Um, so, yeah, and just keep in mind, they like a lot of water. So, otherwise than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a good rest of the day. And I love you guys, and I love the plant community.